Good afternoon. <laughs> I am past the Pitons Pete Zabrock from near Toronto, Ontario. It's like Oakville, eh? But like, since no one knows where Oakville is, eh? Like, I just say like near Toronto, eh? Anyway, uh, what we have here is the Chongo system of soloing a big wall. Now, Chongo, being basically a lazy chap like myself, never wants to carry anything on his lead rack. And so this is a way that you can lead solo a big wall and carry nothing more than your, on your rack than 10 or 15 pounds if that's all that you want to do. Now, um, personally, uh, from, from the traditional style, it used to be that you'd put on a 50 pound rack and you'd head up the crag and lead the pitch and carry everything that you possibly owned in the event that you might happen to need it. Well, with solo tagging, it allows you the opportunity to take only what you need for that particular section and pull up behind you what you uh, use. Now what we have is what's called the continuous loop method and it all starts right here at the bottom and uh, this is my belay that will take an upward pull like that. It's not exactly perfect but you get the idea. The rope, lead rope goes, actually it goes to me, I don't have my harness on, like this and I lead up pulling the rope out of the rope bag. The rope bag is hanging here with all my spare gear on this Fifi hook right here. So when I get to the point where I need more gear, there's a nice nick, I pull the rope up, I pull all the rope out of the bag, the alpine butterfly knot. Ain't that cool? I just learned that last fall on reticent wall. Can you believe I've been climbing for 20 years and didn't know what an alpine butterfly knot was? Anyway, swell knot. And uh, it lifts the solo tag rack off the Fifi. All my extra gear that I don't need for the lead is hanging on here, including the rope. Traditional big wall leading technology would have you wear the rope bag on your butt which means that you have to carry 200 feet of 11 mil rope hanging off your butt. That's unnecessary weight. The whole lead line hangs off of the Fifi hook along with the spare gear, my sweater, my headlamp is in the pouch, my two sets of hooks are in the hook bag so they don't tangle. I've got my heads which I'm not going to need for this pitch thankfully. I have my pitons over here. Here's my sawed off pitons. Beware the climber who has shiny new pitons, okay? Because that means he's never climbed a wall before. The real hard men have these incredibly beat up ones, like these knife blades that have been bashed all to heck. Oh, and here's the uh, wire brush and the uh, <coughs> brand new punch for uh, placing copper heads. These are the cordelettes for the upper belay. And of course, the most amazing innovation in big well technology is the two to one haul system which is a self-contained two to one Z pulley. It's like Z in Canada, eh? But since we're like down in the States, I'll say a Z pulley. But in Canada, it's definitely a Z pulley, eh? Anyway, it's this Z pulley that allows you to haul with a two to one mechanical advantage because what's the point in working any harder than you have to, eh? Like you might as well make this a holiday. These, of course, are screamers, which are slings that uh, are, they're actually stitched together like this uh, with a light, grade of stitching and you put them on pieces that are suspect so if you take a screamer these uh, stitches will actually tear and it will reduce the uh, force on the piece that you fall onto and therefore reduce its likelihood of pulling out of the rock. In other words it makes Crappy Pro a little bit better. So this entire solo tag rack will be pulled up I don't know, every 30 feet, every 50 feet or so, whenever I need some stuff, I pull it up. Needless to say, it's not the sort of thing you want to do if you're in the middle of uh, 50 feet of number two copperheads. What you ideally want is a couple bomber pieces uh, back to back. When I attempted this climb last spring and failed due to El Nino, before I got El Nino'd off, I did lead pitch four, which is the crux, the Coral Sea, and I solo tagged the whole, uh, the whole pitch. And again, you just try to find a couple body weight placements or a couple good placements together and you can tag right up to it. Now, the other benefit of tagging is you don't have to wear the haul line on your backside. Traditional big wall technology would have you wearing the haul line on the back of your harness, which again is unnecessary weight that you don't have to pull up. The haul line is a static cord, 8 mil, 
and uh, it's basically attached to the bottom of the rack and um, I simply pull it up with the entire solo tag rack and you'll notice that I've got a knot protector on each end also clipped in with a clip-in loop that's because when I get to the top I switch ends of the rope you see because as you're hauling you're stuffing the rope into the bag of course if you were to lead another pitch after that the top end would be in the bottom of the bag which is what you don't want so I simply change ends on the rope and viola the uh, top that's French eh? the top of the uh, uh, the bottom of the haul line becomes the top of the haul line so it makes it very easy to switch ends save some time rope stacking now the newest innovation in big wall technology which I'm not entirely sure has actually been used on an ascent of El Cap is the so-called double tagging. And uh, double tagging is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it is rather dangerous for reasons that you're about to see. Now, this is my double tag load. And it contains uh, 15 2-liter bottles of water, so that's 30 kilograms. And that's about half of my body weight. It's hanging on a Fifi hook here at the lower belay. This rope is my backup lead rope. It happens to be the same color as my primary lead rope, but it is the backup lead rope. It's an extra rope that I take along. This rope here connects into the bottom of the solo tag rack, as does the haul line. Each time I pull up the tag rack, I'm also pulling up the double tag line. Double tag line has a knot protector. There's the Fifi. The idea is, here's the really brilliant part about this, and only a truly lazy person would ever have devised this. Uh, lazy and smart, and that's Chongo for you. And I think it's wonderful too because I'm basically lazy. But the idea is that when I rappel down, well, let me explain this first. When you climb with a partner, it's about, it, it's very easy because you lead the pitch and you haul the pitch while you're hauling. Uh, your partner is cleaning the pitch. When you're solo climbing, you don't have a partner to clean. So what you have to do is you've got to clean it yourself. The way that you return from the upper station to the lower station is by rappelling on the haul line. You rappel the haul line down to the lower station and jug back up on the lead line while you clean the gear. Now, normally when you rappel the haul line back to the lower station, all of the potential energy that you have gained by heaving your lard butt up the cliff gets lost due to, get lo uh, gets uh, transformed into heat on your uh, repel device. And that's either the first or second law of thermodynamics. I can't remember. I think it's the first law. The second law says that if you heat your repel device with a lighter, you cannot go back up the cliff. But at any rate, um, why lose all that energy? Instead, why not put some of that energy to better use, lifting something, instead of merely heating up your repel device? Thus, the double tag load, which is about half my body weight. As I'm repelling down on the haul line, the double tag load comes up for free. Think about that. Half a body weight hauled completely for free. The double tag line goes through a wall hauler at the top. A wall hauler is simply a pulley with a uh, toothed cam on to hold it. So as I rappel down, this comes up. What happens, you say, should a person happen to take a screaming lead fall and go ripping past his belay with all of these Fifi hooks? Well, <laughs> therein lies the problem, because this is where the risk is involved. If this piece should happen to blow, you have some serious problems. So we came up with this rather creative solution using a slip knot. And I'll put it here just for demonstration purposes. But what you do is you take the double tag line and put it through the carabiner. Now, if you're going to tie a slip knot, the whole trick is make sure the gate doesn't open, eh? Because like, if you open the gate, you've buggered it, <laughs> okay? So you tie the slippery overhand knot like this. So that if this happens to get knocked off, in theory anyway, this will hold it. That's the theory, yet to be tried. 
Now you say, what happens if this should happen to pull through? Well, what you do is you take an end of the hull line and you stick it through as kind of a backup, which you can pull tight from above. That releases. I come down. The slippery overhand knot comes out. I didn't put it through the carabiner. And up it comes, and down I come. So basically, I am rappelling back down on the haul line. This goes up for free. And it's less stuff that I have to carry. That's cool. Yeah, well. Hey, I just had to show you my new toys. These are like not available in Canada yet, eh? But uh, these are the so-called hybrid alien. It's got the green side cam on one side and the yellow side cam on the other, which is just great for fitting in those flaring piton scars. And I've got some blue green ones too. Can't get those in Canada. I special ordered them. Oh yeah, uh, Trango ball nuts. These are just bitchin' for uh, straight in placements and sometimes they'll save you like a, a baby angle, a sawed off baby. These suckers will just go in, foomp, just beautiful. Got those in three different sizes. And uh, oh yeah, got to show you my other new acquisitions from the States here, these uh, beautiful HB offset brass nuts. You can see that the uh, profile is, uh, shall we say, offset for, that's what they call them. And, uh, these just fit perfectly into these little piton scars. Very, very sweet. Um, you'll notice that I have purple, purple tape on my um, on my wires, and this is for the concept of redundancy. Redundancy is very important when you're climbing a wall, uh, especially when you're alone, because you want to make sure that you don't drop all of everything that you have. So basically, I have two sets of wires. I have purple wires here. And I have the blue set of wires here. Now, if I drop the blue set of wires, isn't that a great trick? I want to show you that one again. Okay, watch this. I'm going to drop this stuff. I'm going to drop it, okay? And now I'm going to pick it up. <laughs> I will not enjoy this luxury in a few days when I'm up there, okay? That's, that's just the greatest trick. Anyway, if I do happen to drop the blue set of nuts, I have a complete purple set in reserve. And the racking labels, which is another Chongo in, uh, innovation, make sure that I always have a complete set of wires on each, on each carabiner. In other words, I have a number five here and a number five there. Imagine how, imagine the situation you would be in if say you dropped all of your number three and number four wires what would you do if you came to a placement that absolutely required that size if you had dropped all of the same size you'd be totally out of luck this prevents you from dropping everything all of the same size I used to have racking labels on my cams but I don't really pay attention to them anymore I do however make sure that if I rack more than one cam on any given carabiner that there are not two cams of the same size in other words you might put a blue, a yellow, and a green alien all on one carabiner, but you would never put three yellows all on the same carabiner because if you drop that carabiner, you would be SOL. That Excuse me while I fall off the rock. The hauling ratchet is a two-to-one standalone Z pulley hauling system. It allows you to haul with a two-to-one mechanical advantage because when you hang around on the wall as long as I do, remember this is a holiday, I'm not rushing, okay, I'm taking my time, you gotta haul up a lot of food and water. A one-to-one -one mechanical haul for a skinny guy like me, I'm just not gonna, well, I used to be skinny, okay, now that I'm 40 I'm not quite so skinny, but after the wall I promise this will be gone. At any rate, skinny guys, or lightweight guys, shall we say, can haul up to double their body weight uh, absolutely simply. Now here we have um, basically two components to the system. Oh, this is the wall hauler that I described. I actually have two of these. It's a pulley with a tooth cam that grips the rope. And this is what I put on the top of the double tag line that holds the uh, half body weight load as I go down and it goes up. When it gets to the top, it's this cam that actually holds it in place. That's component one. Component two is 
cord here, which I will have to unknot. Oops, sorry, I tied it in a knot, but there we go. Okay, now this is the two to one pulley. Very simply, this is how it works. You need a separate piece of five or six millimeter cord, two pulleys. Notice how I've got this just tied in there. It gives it an extra degree of freedom than if you clip directly into the carabiner. You need that extra degree of freedom so that the uh, axes line up correctly. This is an inverted ascender. I've used my caving ascender here instead of the traditional kind with the uh, handle on it because the handle tends to get in the way. What you also need to do is clip a water bottle on for no hands operation because you don't want to work any harder than you have to. So basically, no hands operation. This is hanging up here. Hey, <laughs> perfect. I didn't even plan that, ladies and germs. Don't try this one at home. Actually, it's a very good idea to try all of this stuff at home because uh, you don't want to find out the hard way that it doesn't work. But basically, here is the two-to-one haul. This is what holds the rope in between hauls. So basically, imagine a haul line through here. I just lift, lift up the haul line, pull down, and that's how it works. Two to one. Nice. And this is a system that I used to successfully solo Iron Hawk last year. Actually, not last year, uh, fall of 97, the very same route that you guys are going to do. You're going to love it. It's a great climb. And this two to one mechanical system allowed me to easily haul enormous amounts of food and water. Uh, and I can say that I spent 16 days, 16 days up there alone soloing that thing. And I was never once hungry or thirsty. I had everything I needed. Yeah. I had a book. I enjoyed the sun. I had the rain fly on a couple days. I got terrified by the 510 free climbing at the top with a 20-foot run out. That scared the pants off me. Uh, the expanding flake in the middle was pretty good value. And my heart definitely skipped a beat when the 40-foot high flake uh, beneath the roof, uh, I was hanging on it with a 3-inch cam, and the sound that it made was, could-a-dunk, could-a-dunk. Uh, I rather quickly got off that cam.